All right, I want to review a little bit of what we did yesterday. Just tell me what we did. You write it as I write it, okay? We came across a problem like this, and first thing we do is we counted our units. How many total units? Three. So I would have three units equals six, okay? And then I figured out what one unit would be. And it was 6 divided by 3 equals 2. Does that look familiar? Do you have to put like your 6 divided by 3? Yes. And now I looked at the number of boxes in the bracket. So 2 units would equal 4. four. So the answer to this problem is 4, and that's how we did it yesterday. Those of you who were absent, this is what will be required of you. Okay? Now, I want you to do this. Go ahead, draw a circle around it. Okay, you ready? Yeah. We're done. Yeah. We're done with that kind of problem. Yes. Yes. Now, but, but if you were gone yesterday, you still have to go back and do this. Okay. The rest of us, we're done. We're, we're going to bury this one. We're not doing it again. Okay? Yeah, now, does do that it? mean I don't ever want you to use a tape diagram? Yes. Absolutely yes. not. Tape diagram is one of the best strategies to solve a problem you don't know. And I'm going to show you that later on if we have time. Are you talking? Okay. So now here's what I need you to do. Think back. You might have had an excellent third grade teacher teaching you math, like Maria did. Okay, I did too. okay. I'm just joking. Okay, here's how we introduced it. We all did it the same way. Put your pencils down and listen. You're going to go back in time because this is a building block for you. First thing we did is we we read a story about cookies. We did some dividing of cookies. Okay. Where are the book about it? Oh yeah. Yes. The doorbell rang. And then we learned that there were groups of in multiplication, and we started making plates with cookies on them based on that book we read. Okay? And then let's just say we had three children sharing 12 cookies. Don't draw this. Okay? Our next step was something that looked like this. Repeat and addition. Repeat and addition. Okay, that was the beginning of your multiplication experience at this school anyway, okay? Repeated addition. And then we took this repeated addition and we started making three groups of four with an array. Remember this? Okay, and then we did three groups of four and then we did three times four equals twelve. Now that's a building block. We're not doing that today. But I need you to think about it. If you're writing that down, you're wasting your time. Today we're going to use that strategy and then move away from it. So we've got three different methods we're going to use when multiplying a whole number times a fraction. You do need to write these three down. Okay? Now the first one is just the building block. It's the repeated addition. So how would I take this column, 6 times 2 thirds, and write that down as repeated addition, Jules? How many copies of it? Okay, go ahead and do that for the first one. And you won't have to do that very often. Because, like I said, we're done with that. We're moving into... A little bit we have. I think it was less than three, maybe. Okay, now, when you do this type of a problem, do you skip count? What do you do? You, uh, add, the, uh, you, the add, the you add the numerators. Okay, so I could do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, right? Or I could. I could do um, six times two, okay? So this method right here is the one that you started with early on in, in multiplying that gives you a visual of what's really happening, okay? So this next 
method is the fifth grade way of doing this. And you have to write it exactly like this, okay? You'll see why in a minute. So go ahead and write six times two thirds. And here's the new and improved strategy. You're going to do six times two divided by three. And six times two is what? Twelve. Divided by three. Four. And there's your answer. Three. Now that's really great. Except for when I'm doing a problem that looks like this. No way do I want to do 56 times 2 and then divide it by 3. I don't want to do it. Here's my goal. My goal is no standard algorithm unless I absolutely have to keep my numbers as small as I can. So, Carson, I don't want you to comment just yet. What if I had 56 times 7 eighths? No, I don't want to do it. There's an easier way I'm going to show you right now. Now, do you remember, boys and girls, that I often teach you a strategy on a simple problem so you can apply it to a harder problem? Yeah. Okay, so I'm teaching you the strategy. Now, this one right here, let me tell you what this one is called. Lazy fifth grade strategy. Yay. Okay, you want to do it with me? Yes. yes. I'm great so, at this. Six, I know you are. Six <laughs> times two thirds. Okay, I'm going to pop that up just a little bit. And we're going to start the exact same. 6 times 2 divided by 3. And that's where the similarities stop. Now I'm going to do something called factoring. Factoring is just finding the greatest common factor and dividing by it. So the greatest common factor between 3 and 2, there isn't one. But there is one between 6 and 3. Two. No. No. Three. Three. If I do, watch this. If I factor six, one times six, two times three, and I get the same number I'm dividing by, then I'm going to cross these both off, and I'm going to, in my head, three divided by three equals what? And six divided by three equals, okay, go ahead and do that now. It's called factory. Lazy fifth grade method. Two times two, what is it? Four. What's four divided by one? Four. Well, there you have it. Not one number was too high to do in my head. You, you'll get better at it. Okay? You like the middle one better, but you don't get to use it. So let's take a look at this one. We'll practice all three methods again. Well, I think we're done with repeated addition. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So method two, this is fifth grade. This is lazy fifth. But this is lazy but smart. Yeah. Okay, That's so go ahead and write three fifths times ten down. Now, Maria, do you remember the strategy we just learned? where I have a multiplication problem on top of a number. What would I multiply up there? 3 times 10. And what am I going to divide it by? The divisor. Okay. So 3 times 10 equals 30 fifths. 30 divided by 5 equals... Okay, so we will get 6 for an answer. Now, we're still doing the... Uh, practicing the strategy on easy problems. So, on the next one, if, do you have a choice whether or not you write this? Yes. No, you don't. You're writing it. End of story. 3 times 10 divided by 5. That's where I want you to stop. Now, if I factor this, 3 times 10 and a 5. 3 and 5 don't share any factors, but do 5 and 10? Yeah. What factor do they share? Five. The greatest factor they share is 5. So I'm going to divide by 5. What's 5 divided by 5? What's 10 divided by 5? 
What is three times two? Six. You'll get this. Okay. For now, yes. Okay, now this is what I'm talking about. Not one part of me wants to do 7 times 4 and then divide it by 6. Or 7 times 24 and divide it by 6. So rewrite this problem. And I know that you understand it very well to do 7 times 24 divided by 6. But what are my goals? No standard algorithm, keep my numbers small. So I'm going to look for factors. 7 and 6 don't share a factor. Do 6 and 24. What factor do you 6. 6. Hey, here in a minute we'll do our factor charts and you'll see what we're talking about. So I'm going to divide by 6. 6 divided by 6 equals 1. 24 divided by 6 equals 4. My answer is 28 divided by 1. Now let's see if that makes sense. 7 6 of 24 is a little bit more than one hole. And one hole is 24. 28 a little bit more than 24? Yeah. Not much. Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. By the way, if I would have done the standard algorithm, I would have done 168 divided by 6. And that's after I did 24 times 7. I'm for this way. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. We're going to use the factor charts. So 7 6 of 27, or 7 6 times 27. So I've got 7 times 27 divided by 6. Now right away I know 6 does not go into 27. So I'm going to find a factor they share. Do this for me, boys and girls. Yes. Now we're looking for the greatest factor they share. What are the factors of 6? 1 times 6, 2 times 3, okay? 27. 1 times 27, 3 times, I'm done. What's the greatest factor Three. they share? So this is where it becomes tricky. I'm not going to write the 3 anywhere. I'm doing it in my head. So once I figure out the factor, if you want to write divided by 3 up here so you don't forget, you can. Or you can just remember it. What's 6 divided by 3? 2. What's 27 divided nine. by 3? 7 times 9 63. divided by 2. Now that's going to be a mixed number. So this time standard algorithm is the fastest way to do it. 63 divided by 2. You got it. Now, if you do 3 times 2 is 6, bring down your 3, 2 goes in there once, you have 1 left over. It's still the fastest way to do it. Write down the standard algorithm. My answer to this problem is 31 and a half. Carson, what's your question? Uh, can you wait till this next one and then I'll let you go, okay? All right. Actually, just go now. It's fine. All right, so I'm running out of room. I'm going to get rid of this. Let's do this problem. Okay? 5 eighths times 28 equals 5 times 28 divided by 8. Now, did you notice we're just simplifying it before we multiply it? Did anybody notice that? This is just like simplifying a fraction. Okay, so 28 and 8. Now, here's a little trick. Do the small number. 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Do any of these numbers go into 28? 
So you will divide by four, and you didn't have to do this one. This is a trick. Do the smallest one first. Then think about the largest one. Yes. Okay? You like those shortcuts, don't you? Yes. So what are we dividing by this time? Four. Four. So A divided by four is two. 28 divided by four is now, I wrote divided by 4 just so I don't forget, but I don't have to. Yeah. 35 plus 35. So 35, oh, 35 halves. 32. Now, don't shout the answer out. But I still say the fastest way to do this is standard algorithm. Can I say that? No. Oh. Now you can say it. Standard algorithm to prove it. There are some times where doing it in your head is smart. This isn't one of them. Okay? All right, we've got one more problem. And then I think we'll go back and do the application problem. Okay. Do you have this on your paper? Yeah. All right, two thirds. What am I going to multiply two-thirds by if it's asking me for uh, two-thirds of an hour equals like 60. 60. 60, okay? Now, before I start this problem, because 60 is kind of a large number, I'm going to have to do this divided by 3. Are you comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. So, do 3 and 60 share a factor? Yes. It's 3, isn't it? So, divided by 3. 60 divided by 3 is what? 20. So, I have 40 minutes. Okay, now watch my other strategy. No, you don't have to write it. Whoops. Which one do you like better? That other one. The one that you just did. I know. So not always is the method by just using numbers, it's called computation. That's not always the easiest way to solve a problem. And when you're working on a, an assessment like a math assessment, this is a very intelligent way to solve a problem. And if it says use numbers, words, or drawing, right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop it there.